Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saver CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. We have a great video for you. We're going to do a walk around of the Shop Saver IS Series CNC router. IS stands for industrial strength, and you're going to see why. This machine is truly a machine to a grade CNC router. This particular model is an IS408. That means four foot by eight foot. We also make these in five by 10 and six by 12. You know, people ask me all the time, how do you evaluate the quality of a machine tool like this? And it's really quite simple. We're fortunate because we actually have a frame that just came out of the machine shop. Let's go take a look at it and let's see what's under the hood. Looking at this machine tool frame is really, really exciting. You know, the first thing I look at is the material it's made out of. These are made out of structural steel. It's the same material they make bridges and buildings out of for that matter. There's a reason we do that. First off, it's all sourced from North America, so there's not any imported steel because of the quality. And if you also notice, we use a lot of it. Now, the reason we actually like structural steel is not that. We like it because we can use engineering software for design. Because structural steel is consistent, then we can make predictions based on, on loads and stuff. And so that enables us to actually design a machine totally in a, as a solid model in the computer before we make it. That's an advantage of being an American manufacturer because we control everything from the acquisition of the metal all the way through the, the back end. Now, something else that's neat about this, the way it's engineered, finite element analysis actually tells us things like what size tube to put here, what spacing it should be, what the spacing on the well should be. All of those things are determined by that. In fact, if you notice on the front frame here, that bottom tube actually serves as a vacuum tank. It's a vacuum plenum, and we'll look at that a little bit later. Something else that's really important about a frame like this is, is how, how it's actually created. Well, for one thing, if you look inside, you'll notice that the wells on the inside are as good as on the outside. So even things that you don't normally see are, are, are immaculate. And we do that because I think it says a lot about the company. And I tell you, the welder that does that, that's his signature. And welders are very particular about what that wells looks like. So even though it's in a place you probably never see after you bought the machine, it's, it's still there. Now there's another part of fabrication also, and that's how the machining's actually done. And if you notice on the sides here on those datums that we machined to mount guide rails, all the machining on these machines is done in a single setup with an aerospace mill. So what that means is this frame assembly has the accuracy of the aerospace mill. Now, let's look at some other parts of the frame over at the other machine. The other members of the frame family are the gantry itself and the gantry supports. You know, these are engineered the same way as a base. We're using finite element analysis. We're using structural steel. We're doing really, really good precision machining. That also enables us to have a 12 inches under the gantry of clearance. All that fits into the engineering design system. Now, what you actually see on here are what are called precision guide rails. And you know, they're only as accurate as the machining that's done underneath. That's why we use aerospace mills to actually do all the machining on these, on these frames. Now, the precision guide rails are found on the X, Y, and Z axis, and they're actually the first part of the motion control group. The second part of machine motion is actually the precision ball screws that we use to drive the X, Y, and Z axis. When we created uh, the IS series, our whole concept was to create a really, really accurate machine tool grade CNC router, and it only made sense to use ball screws because of that. Now, that kind of brings us to another discussion here. I get asked this all the time about rack and pinion versus ball screws, and let's unpack that a little bit. The way rack and pinions work is a little pinion gear that meshes with the rack, and there has to be some play in there. It's called backlash, and it's required. In a typical machine, it will require three to five thousandths. What happens to you, somewhere on the table, sometimes that three to five thousandths adds up a little bit, and you'll see a, a bump in an edge. If you're doing precision edges like you do in aluminum or plastic or MDF or some other high-end wood stuff, that can, you'll have to deal with those defects that, that that system produces. We don't have that problem with ball screws because ball screws are preloaded, so there's no play in them. You know, something that's really interesting is a lot of the people that will tell you rack and pinions is just as good use ball screw in the z-axis because that's the most demanding axis on a CNC machine. The final mechanical part of machine motion is actually the drive motors themselves. And we use Mitsubishi closed-loop AC digital servos. And we do that for a reason. For one thing, 
What we've tried to do with this machine is create that concept of a machine to a great CNC router. So it's going to have to be really accurate. It's going to have to be really powerful because we have to produce real high cutting speeds. So you just can't do that with steppers or a real low end uh, servos. And on top of that, we also put glass encoders in there. Now, here's what those do. Those feed back to the machine control, and they're very, very fast, so it, it makes the machine more accurate. Now, the final part of machine control is machine control itself. Let's go take a look at that. The machine control is actually housed in the machine control cabinet, and we put all the major electrical components in there also, like the drives and the VFDs and things like that. There's also a fully operational PC in there. That gives you the ability to connect to a network to transfer files. It also has an SSD drive in there, so you can store a whole lot of files on there. You can also run software. So if you have a cabinet program you want to run on here, or VCAR Pro or something like that, that can be done right here at the machine control. If you like a touchscreen, we also offer a resistive touch touchscreen. And it's really important that you use that style touchscreen for safety reasons. You know, one of my favorite options on this machine is a wireless handheld pennant because it really makes it easy to set the machine up. Now, machine control itself is built on a really robust technology from Mitsubishi. In fact, MMP stands for Mitsubishi Motion Platform. But you know, there's a part of machine control that's really people related. And it relates to how easy it's going to be for your operator to be successful. We try to create something that an average worker could be successful with. Let me show you how easy it is to run this machine. What really stands out is how well organized the screen is. Uh, all the buttons that you use are on a single screen and they're organized into groups. Now let's take a look up here. These are actually jog buttons and this makes the machine jog in X, Y, or Z axis. I can jog at slow, medium, or fast rates. I can also move incrementally. So I can say, okay, each time I click on the button, I want to move an inch. That's moving an inch at a time, of course, in all the axis, or a tenth of an inch, or ten thousandths of an inch, or even a thousandth of an inch at a time. So that, that works out really well. And of course, down here on the screen, you'll actually see where the router spindle is at all times. Right now, if you look below that, you find some buttons that I call routine buttons. These are things we pretty much use all the time. We home the machine each day. We touch tools off. We set zeros and those kinds of things. Maybe turn the spindle on. Um, now, and those are things that you pretty much do every day. If you come up here, you'll notice some positional things. This is basically telling us where the machine is. And you'll see the positions read out. And actually, if you look over here, there's some sliders here. These basically allow you to change the feed rates and change the spindle speed down here while the machine's running. And that works out really nice because in certain materials, it lets you basically tune the machine to where the cutter sounds really good going through it. This area down here is actually uh, shows you where the router spindle is. So if I jog this around, you see where the spindle is on the table. You know, there's a nice feature we also put in this, and I'll tell you what that is, and it's really good for the operators. Let's say that you have you want to set a park position. Now, what a park position is, is where the machine goes when it finishes a program. Typically, because of load and unload, I'm probably going to want that to be down at the end here. All my operator has to do is jog the machine down to, to wherever they want it to park. We'll say about here in the middle, and I set a park position. I'm going to say P10. Let's go to P10 here. Okay, I'm going to say edit, and I'm going to say get position. Now it saves that position. Now here's what's going to happen. At the end of the program, the code's going to say park at P10, and the machine's going to go there at the end. So it really lets your operator decide where he or she wants the machine parked when they're finished with the program. Okay, now let's actually see what it takes to run one of these. I'm going to say file, open. All right, there's a program. Okay, we'll click on the little viewing icon here, and you'll actually see on the screen, you'll see the, the program and what we're cutting out. And you notice this is that move that we just set that's a park position. Then when I hit the green button, it starts executing. And as you can see on here, you can actually see the machine traverse around as it's cutting those parts out. It makes it a really, really simple interface to use. And it doesn't take uh, an engineer type person to be successful with this. Now, let's take a look at Super Z technology. There's a little history that led to this concept of Super Z technology. Let me share that with you. The first thing we did is we told engineering, 
we want to actually be able to, to use the total clearance that's under the gantry. You know, you may not know this, but a lot of companies will say, okay, we put 12 inches under the gantry, but they only have 12 inches of travel at Z. So you can't really, in practice, use all that space. So the first thing engineering came back with, they said, okay, we're going to develop a slide system that gives us 16 inches of Z. So that way you can really take advantage of the clearance under the gantry. So that's the first thing that was developed. The next thing we realized is a lot of companies put big horsepower spindles, but you can't really use it. And you can't use it because the tool plates aren't strong enough. And so we went back to engineering and we said, here's what we want you to do. We want you to develop a technology that strengthens the cutter as it's in the material. And that's what led to these stiffeners. Once again, those were a product of finite element analysis. So engineering came back with that and that tested that really, really well. Now the next thing that came along was we, we challenged engineering to come up with a way to allow us to machine 3D faster. Now some people don't realize that 3D machining is actually determined by your slowest axis. In almost all machines, that's going to be Z. So we said, how can we overcome that? And here's how we did it. First off, we started with a balancing cylinder up here. All right, here's what that does. That takes the weight off the ball nut, which is attached to the ball screw. Once we take that weight off, that allows us to accelerate and decelerate much, much faster. Therefore, we can increase the speeds in Z and 3D machining is a lot faster. When you put all those together, those became what we call Super Z technology. Now, this machine also has some optional heads on here. This has a, a 3D laser scanner. It also has the ability to put on knife heads, drill blocks, and all those things. And we're actually able to do that because the basic frame is about a foot wider. So if it's a four by eight, it's actually five foot wide. And we do that so later after the fact, you can actually put those options on. Now, let's take a look at the machine table. This machine has a phenolic table. We also offer tables in a couple other materials. You know, I'm gonna measure this table because this machine says four by eight. But when I actually measure it, it's a little bit wider than five feet. And we do that, as we said earlier, so that you can have optional heads and things added t later if you need to. Now, this is a vacuum table. It's, it's technically what we call a hybrid vacuum table because we've also incorporated T-slots. And these T-slots are actually uh, screwed through the table down into the frame members of the machine itself, so they're really, really tight. Now, those are used for special setups. So this machine is specified for vacuum, and it's got a lot of stuff on there, so we can really do a lot of different setups on it. This machine also has pop-up pins. Sometimes pop-up pins make it easier for an operator to load and unload the machine. Now, when we machine these tables, they're actually machined with uh, the head on the machine, so they're incredibly flat and really precise, and that allows us to use spool boards without having to put a gasket underneath them. Now, vacuum is actually delivered to the table through these ports. There's actually four valves and eight ports. When we looked at the frame, we looked at that vacuum plenum that's part of the frame. Now let's look under the hood a little bit and let's look at what that actually looks like. You can tell from where those four ports were, they have valves attached. Then those valves are connected through hard tubes to these ports on the table. Then the plenum itself is attached to a four inch tube that goes all the way back. So the machine's designed to get an incredible amount of vacuum to the part. So that's why these work so well. Now, I've got a test for you. We've talked a whole lot about engineering and stuff. I've got a test and we're gonna set three nickels on the edge of this machine. We're gonna crank it up and we're gonna see if this design's rigid enough for those nickels to set there. Let's do the test. Wow, that was impressive. There's machines in the industry that cost two or three times as much as an IS that won't pass that nickel test. It's really a testament to American manufacturing and a shop saber CNC in terms of engineering, the quality of the materials we use, 
everything that goes into making a machine to a grade CNC router. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching. <laughs>